Every time I've talked about Adobe Flash, I've called it a massive security risk and advised people to get it off their system. Now, is it really that bad or am I just full of hot air and completely exaggerating everything? Well, in this video, I'm going to explain exactly why it is a security risk. Now, first off, let's just talk about the browser. So when you're surfing the internet, your computer connects to a multitude of other servers. Now, you don't necessarily know them all because you've got various elements on the page which don't just come from one source. You've got pictures downloaded from, say, one website and discussion features on the page. They come from another site. Now, maybe when you do purchases online, that credit card verification has to go to another site. So, yeah, a multitude of different sites have to be contacted just to display one page. So your browser has to contain all this information and prevent one page from leaking data to another page or even another process outside your computer. It effectively has to sandbox all these various elements. And unfortunately, human beings, or the programmers who created it, are not perfect. No one is 100% perfect, but they do a damn good job. Unfortunately, bolting on extras to your browser like Adobe Flash. Well, you have to then contain the security threat in there as well. So you go and play a video that goes through to Adobe Flash. Now you have to hope that Adobe have programmed Flash sufficiently well that it's, all the processes are thoroughly contained within there. Unfortunately, they have absolutely failed to contain the processes within the one application. So let's go through a bit more on the sources on the internet. Now there's this recent article from the register. Very short. Adobe Flash is the software most widely abused by exploit kits. Security intelligence firm Digital Shadows found that 27 of the 76 identical vulnerabilities abused by exploit kits targeted Adobe Flash. These figures are based on analysis of software bugs abused by the top 22 exploit kits. There are quite a few exploit kits around. Now they don't just target adverts. Sure, a lot of it is advertising related because, well, advertisers have completely let us down and wanted more and more fancy features and unfortunately these run scripts and this is where they can be thoroughly abused. But no, not just for adverts. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a content creator and, uh, and still rely heavily on YouTube ad revenue. No, you do get exploit kits featuring in other websites. Like forums are a particular target and just general poorly secured websites, which unfortunately there are still quite a few of around the internet. Now forums do tend to be exploited for breaching usernames and passwords, and we, we had a recent case of the Brazers porn forum where 800,000 user details just got released. Yeah, but instead someone could have used these vulnerabilities in the forums and made additional scripts run on the page. An exploit kit. Now one of the early famous ones I knew about was the black hole exploit kit. This was built by a group of Russians and they literally provided it as malware as a service. Instead of software as a service, we have malware as a service and they literally leased out the servers, they leased out the exploit kit, gave hackers all the instructions they needed on how to exploit sites. And they gave a lovely interface as well about how successful their campaign had been infecting other computers. Now it's not just Windows computers that were getting affected at that time. Now that theme has proved so successful that it has been repeated over and over again. Now onto Adobe Flash. So if you look at Google News for Adobe Flash critical updates, you'll find many results. Just repeated every month, Adobe releases critical updates, patch now. And it's not just confined to computing websites, I've seen results on the likes of the BBC. Now when we talk about vulnerabilities, there's a central database of them called Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures, CVE. So the number is made up of the year, and, well, it's a four-digit number at the moment, but I think they're actually going on to, like, five- and six-digit numbers. And within there, it details the vulnerability, and in this case, it's the Heartbleed vulnerability from in OpenSSL. You've got the description there of the versions that were affected, and just a little bit of information about the exploit itself. Now down here we have a CVSS score. This is a score out of 10 about how severe a vulnerability is and how easy it is to exploit. And if it can be exploited by remote users or if it has to be like a local user. And it's also based upon code being out in the wild. 
like is it available to everyone, or has a researcher found this vulnerability and disclosed it privately to a single company, you know, the lower the exposure, the lower the score. And there's a whole big calculation behind this. I've just looked at the Wikipedia page and yeah, there's quite a lot to it. So we come on to the vulnerability statistics for Adobe Flash Player. So this is since 2005 and there's been a grand total of 892. Let's just have a quick comparison to Firefox. Oops, there's a 1400 there and Google Chrome, there's 1300 there as well. So total numbers of vulnerabilities isn't everything. We've got vulnerabilities by type. A denial of service is more of a minor issue. Okay, you go to a website that's poorly coded, your browser doesn't contain that particularly well and crashes. Big deal. The more severe ones are execution of code. You go to a website, your browser doesn't crash, but executes some code which escapes the nice sandbox in the browser's trying to do, gets off into your system and causes more damage. They're more severe. And you look at this and you think, oh, crikey, um, Firefox is pretty bad. There's more stats we can look at though. This is a useful one here. Comparison of CVSS scores. This is the score out of 10 of how severe the vulnerabilities are. So Google Chrome, weighted average CVSS score 7.2, and you see that the most of them are around the middle. Now remember that Google paid bounty for exploits discovered in Chrome, and they pay out quite handsomely. So as a result, vulnerabilities don't get too widely disclosed. When they get disclosed in private, they get fixed by Chrome, 90 days later, they're published. Big deal, after 90 days, perhaps most people were patched. So, no problem. The weighted average score for Firefox, 6.9. No, actually, it's lower. Most vulnerabilities, yeah, around the middle. So, brings us on to Flash Player. What is the weighted score for that? Oh dear. <laughs> Average score 9.7. This means that many vulnerabilities for Flash can be easily executed remotely, gain high privileges on the system, can execute code. This is all done remotely, just by stumbling over a website. That is severe. So it's not just about the total number, it's about how severe the average is. And for Flash, that is shockingly bad. I'm just going back to the stats of how many have been released over the past few years and we're actually we're doing better this year but 2015 300 vulnerabilities. Bear in mind 300 mostly critical vulnerabilities in one year. And this is why I described Adobe Flash as a colander. Literally you could patch a couple of holes but water's still going to leak out everywhere. So I hope that gave you a bit more of an insight as to why I'm so anti Adobe Flash. And my advice really is to get it off your system. But if you have to leave it there, mitigation really is needed. I said use an antivirus checker. Yes, in the past I've said those are an absolute waste of time. But when you're dealing with things like this being so bad in terms of vulnerabilities, then honestly, an antivirus really is... a a useful thing to have in that case. By default now, a lot of the browsers are blocking Flash. This does help mitigate a lot of the risk. Do I trust that entirely though? I, I, I don't know. I guess I would like to be proven wrong on it, but in theory, that should work. But again, I don't really know the truth. But for all you know, that you get these pop-up boxes appear on some screens and people just go, yeah, 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 whatever. And there you go, so you've been hit with uh, a nice lump of malware, which you could have stopped, but because the computer's always asking questions, you just go, yeah, whatever. 